Ladies and gentlemen and legends of the highest regard, welcome back to Democracy 4. Now we're going to do something different this time around and something that I've previously done on this channel but kind of didn't end up going in the direction I wanted it to and that is we're going to do a playthrough. We're going to do it in Australia but compared to the previous playthroughs where we've just tried to balance everything and you know keep things under control or with our recent one with the United States where we literally set the goal that we set was to create as much anarchy and destruction as possible. This time round, we're going to govern Australia from a middle ground, moderate position. And the aim is that we are not going to cut anything. We're just going to do things that advantageous to the people, advantageous to the economy, the environment, things like that. We are trying not to remove or reduce any policies, only introduce or increase policies from a uh, centrist standpoint. And the reason for that is because the end goal is to turn Australia into an economic, wealthy superpower. More than it already is, really. Because if we're honest, it's one of the more wealthy countries in the world. So now I want to harness, because it's not, like it doesn't utilize that much green energy and things like that yet. And it doesn't have very high internet speeds compared to other uh, uh, wealthy nations in the world, etc. These are the kind of things that I want to introduce in to take it that next step. Now, the biggest problem I've got is I've only got 25 and a half million people to work with. So there's only so much money coming in. And there's potentially going to be a lot of money going out. So, yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit play. So we want to leave. So compulsory voting is a thing in Australia. Technically, three parties. I mean, if you look at it properly now in Australia, there's more than three major parties. There's two absolute majors and then three or four uh, semi-majors and then another three or four that are uh, sort of on the cusp of becoming well-known. Why am I like, ah, oh, it's the color of my jumper. I'm like, why am I disappearing into my green screen? Because of the color of my jumper. So... Uh, Political apathy. I feel like the political apathy being down at 0% is not uh, quite right. But it seems like this is the center, you know, setup that the game has sort of selected for me. Everything's in the center. We're going for a moderate centrist approach. So now I just have to come up with the names. So the Green Party here in Australia is surprise, surprise, called the Greens. I know, very, um, yeah. So these are going to be, so what we're looking for is we're looking to have a party that is left, a party that is right, and then us who are going to be sort of as m best as possible smack bang in the middle, stealing the best from the left and the best from the right and bang together. I probably clapped a little bit loud for the microphone then. That's my bad. Um, so, for the very left green party, um, I've got to come up with names. That's going to be interesting. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Let's see what sort... I was going to try and name these things on my own, but it turns out that that's probably not uh, going to happen very easily because on the spot I can't think of things like this. And I should have thought of these things before I started this video, but do you think I did? No. Why would I do that? That's preparation. Who does preparation? I know I certainly don't. Um, so I'm going to go with the Green Collective and then... The right wing, 
So with this party, we're looking for conservative, um, uh, religious, etc. We're not necessarily looking for capitalism because capitalists are not necessarily right or left wing. They are economy um, based and because we're going to be making a lot of effort towards the economy with our centrist views, I'm hoping that we can take the capitalists in our favour uh, instead of them moving to the left or the right. So something that says the Family Values Party, I mean, that's kind of, yeah. The Family Values Party is not. The Patriotic Alliance, ooh, the Patriotic Alliance. Actually, that would be a really, really good, um, yes. So we're gonna go with the Patriotic Alliance and then us. We're definitely not gonna be the Unionists. Um, hmm. The New Moderates? Yeah, I don't mind that name, The New Moderates. All right. Let's um let's play. So first things first, I'm basing this off of what is currently occurring in the world. So I need to think along the lines of we are starting to make our way out of a pandemic. People are going to need jobs. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, even though unemployment is pretty good. Poverty and crime are quite high and we want to reduce that. But what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and reduce that by not... Uh, what's the... How, much, how do I word this? We're going to try and reduce that by not necessarily reducing the things that cause crime, more implementing policy that increases the things that enable people to have a life outside of committing crimes. So almost a libertarian approach to it, but not quite fully absolute freedom kind of situation, I guess, is probably the best way I can word it. Anyway, I am Prime Minister. I have the lives of 25,500,000 citizens in my hands. Um, I have a 10% majority, and I face re-election in three years. So... I only have 14 political capital, which is not fantastic, but first things I'm going to do is I'm going to head to the economy. I'm going to get the business startup campaign. I'm going to fund that to the maximum. I'm going to apply those changes. And then the small business grants, that's going to be funded to the max as well. So not only do we have the policy for the startup, then we have the grants as well. And then we want to have a national business council so that all these people within these businesses feel accepted and feel like they have a voice within the country. Now, this is my uh, idea of blasting the economy into complete powerful ob oblivion by basically making it super easy for the people in the population to start their own business as a sole trader, employing other people, whatever, and generate their own capital growth so that they are less reliant on big corporations and companies and all that. And God forbid something like a global pandemic happens again in the future, they're not up shit creek without a paddle. So that's used all our political capital. And I'll be honest, the first term is going to probably involve a lot of spending, but it'll be spending in things that potentially generate a return for the government as well. So 
we are potentially, yeah, bad situation, technology backwater. And to be honest, this is a serious issue that is currently in Australia as well. Very little science funding, very little, um, uh, like very slow internet speed by the standards of first world countries, etc. So we need to make a big focus on uh, technology and education as well to increase this. So, free eye tests, not something that we need to potentially think about right now. I'm more thinking that state schools is something we should definitely be uh, increasing. So we're going to go up to, oh, actually, So I can take it to there and we go straight to modern textbooks, which is good. That's going to help with poverty and it's going to help with the poor, which unfortunately, as much as we don't like to admit it, that's also going to help the crime rate because in a lot of scenarios, it's those people who are put in those positions who unfortunately end up turning to crime. Uh, you know, it is what it is. We can't, you know, we can't uh, dance around that fact too much. Um, we want to change that. So science funding, we are going to absolutely smash the science funding. Uh, it's got an implementation delay of four turns, but that's all right. That's fine. That's about a year, but that's cool. No issues with that. That did use up the rest of our political capital, but now, now we should start to see some results in the next couple of turns in our popularity. So, violent video games. Um, we'll go somewhere in the middle. We're going to add some warning labels. We don't want to take it away from people. We don't want to censor it. We still want people to have uh, the freedom to, you know, make a decision, etc. So we're just going to add some warning labels. I know the youth don't like that, etc. You know what? Too bad, so sad. You can't have everything your way, unfortunately. Uh, so, improved tenancy rights. There is a there is currently a proposal to increase the rights of tenants in rented accommodation. Now, this has recently happened in a few states um, in Australia. And I'm going to improve the tenant's rights, not to a ridiculous amount, but to a point where there's at least some sort of balance because previously it was very, very, very geared towards property managers and um, landlords. I want to balance it a little bit, but I still want to keep the laws there uh, that sort of say that if you're a really shit tenant, you're still going to get fucking screwed and you deserve to be fucking screwed as well but this is going to stop those who don't deserve it from potentially ending up in that situation through no fault of their own so we will yep so the capitalists and the wealthy don't like that and you know what So the Environmental Alliance have warned that it is the duty of its members to fight against government policy at all levels. But that's not an issue right now because we will sort that out over time. As long as it doesn't get any worse than have warned uh, its members to fight against our policy at all levels, that's fine. 1% uh, intend to vote at the next election. Again, that is something that will... So the doctor's strike is imminent. We're going to uh, bump up the state health service funding to help negotiate that potential issue from spiraling out of control. So, currently it is at some prevention. We want to bring it up to excellent health provision. It's got a three year implementation delay, which is why I want to do it early so that as we approach the next election, the after effect has occurred. So I'm aware that's basically going to knock out all my political capital, but it is a worthy investment and an investment that needs to be made 
early on. Now, the other policy I want to implement, which comes back to our uh, business implementations that we made previously, is we want to trade counsel as well so that these small businesses are boosted by international trade uh, offerings as well. And we want to maximize that because one thing that has occurred in Australia over the last 10 years is a lack of of things produced within this country that are then traded offshore. And I don't like that because this country used to be so self-sufficient that it needs to come back to that. So that's what we're going to do. Okay. So we have food shortages. Because we don't produce anything here anymore. So that's interesting. I need to sort that out. Tax evasion is potentially going to become a problem. Again, that's a thing. I will get to that. As long as it doesn't go over that start trigger. Until it get, if it, if it rises again, I'll bring that to a high priority at the moment. It can just be a thing that we know that we have to sort out. Now... I need to sort out the food shortage and the crime is very high. So I need to do something about the crime. The police force will uh, bring that up, but we're not going to use armed police. We're just going to have the police force. Sorry, we do have armed police. I do apologize. Now I said I'm not going to bring things down, so... No, I don't want to have every officer armed. I feel like that's a that's that's too much. We want a widespread. We don't want every officer armed. So, press freedom at the maximum. I'll tell you right now, as an Australian living in Australia, that ain't the fucking case. So, I'm going to send that high as well. That leaves us with three political capital. Now, I know there's things that we probably should be focusing on that they're not currently focusing on. I want to implement health food subsidies to help with the food issue that we've just come across. So as you can see, at the moment, I'm increasing the deficit. I'm increasing the debt, but what I'm aiming to do is get the situations that are in bad shape under control before... I focus on the debt. And that might seem like a crazy thing, but when you're in a country where the citizens are well-fed, low poverty, low crime, no issues in uh, income, that is when you can focus on removing the debt. Okay, so... Obesity, the health food subsidies is going to help that. Drop right down. That'll take a bit of time to implement. So we'll just watch that at the moment. Crime dropped on that one. The GDP is not in an upward state. So we might need to do something about the GDP uh, in businesses. So uh, yeah, now we're going to leave that unchanged. I don't like the idea of anyone being able to be searched just because there is a, a thought that they may have done something that is not of interest at this point. We will monitor that and we can change that. Now, GDP, so economy, um, young entrepreneur scheme. So we want to teach our youth that running your own business and being involved in business is a good thing. Being self-sufficient is a good thing. So we're going to implement this policy. It's not very expensive. Yeah. Now, stem cell research. Let's put some money into that as well. This is going to help us not be a technology backwater. 
by doing these things alongside the fact that we did up the schooling, we did up the science. Now we also need to look at education, especially adult education, to make sure that we, now that we are funding so many things within the country, we need to make sure that our adult population can reskill if required to reap the benefits and rewards of that. Um, yeah. So, pollution is under control. The Environmental Alliance are now only criticizing our policies on online forums. Our approval rate has jumped to 60, so it's been a continuous incline, which is a good thing. So, a group of religious extremists have taken some hostages at gunpoint and are threatening to kill them unless demands regarding foreign policy are not met. The demands they make are not that extreme, but it might be dangerous to be seen to negotiate. Um, ooh. Hmm. I'm going to send in the police. I mean, I would have preferred to have another option there, but it didn't give me another option. I'm not exactly sure what that option would have been, but if there was somewhere in the middle, I would have selected that. But yeah. So science funding is through the roof. We can, uh, we no longer have to be concerned about science funding. Um, compulsory food labeling, mm, not yet, because that will increase the food price, and right now we're having an issue with the food price. State schools, because, I mean, I want, when it comes to education, I want to implement like a Scandinavian style policy where no child gets left behind. I think that's very important, so that's why I'm focusing on all these very important issues that do increase expenditure and the deficit right now, but will hopefully have a flow-on effect where that's not the situation in the future. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that wouldn't be a thing in this country because there is a uh, very much a food situation within this country which governs a lot of that stuff and would result in very few situations of that occurring. But this is a game, so yeah. All right, so obesity has passed the start trigger. Now, the health food subsidies in the state health service are helping that and will bring it back down, but... Right now, not going to. Okay. Um, so, we will maximize the state health service. I know that's going to use six political capital and we didn't necessarily have to do that, but it just means that we can. University grants. Grants for everyone. Seems insane, not insane. Used to be a thing in this country back in the 70s and 80s. Everybody would get be able to go to university for free. And I want to re-implement that because it's very important that people can go back and study without potentially being put into debt. So at the moment, the only people that hate us are conservatives and the religious. Everyone, there's a lot of people who are very much in the middle. And then the patriots, the poor, the retired, the socialists, and the state employees absolutely love us. Alright, so Cody Jackson doesn't like me, but that's alright because I don't like him, so he can go fuck himself. Um, food prices have returned to normal levels. Increased school inspections. There are concerned that school standards are slipping and the current regime for examining teaching methods in schools is not sufficient. Campaigners suggest a toughening up of... Um, yeah, let's increase it. We'll increase it. I know state employees don't like that. 
but in return, they will be making more money by the time that my government has uh, finished with them. That sounds really bad. You know what I mean. <laughs> okay, so every student is now going to get a laptop. That's increasing our costs massively. I'm very aware of that. The state water company, we're going to fund that as well so that we don't ever end up with a food or water shortage again. I feel like that's very important. Um, we're definitely going to start losing some ministers soon. That's fine. It is what it is. If they don't want to be a part of the government, I don't want to have them as part of the government. There you go. Antisocial behavior has fallen considerably. Look at the crime. We've basically halved the crime. Uh, pollution is now above the start trigger. So we might need to do something in relation to the pollution, which is fine. I have no issues with that. This is directly caused by our GDP uh, going through the roof. We've also increased now to 27% approval. So we've gone from zero to 27%. So we're definitely tracking in the right direction, which is a good thing. So we need to implement something uh, environmental. Smart meter program might be worth it because seeing a smart meter is already a compulsory thing in new homes here in Australia. We may as well just do that. So that's going to up the energy efficiency, uh, which is going to help the environment. It's going to bring down the energy industry, but we're going to implement our own energy industry. And then I wonder if there is another thing that we... So, see, Food Standards Agency is already a thing in this country, so it should be implemented. But what we're going to do is we're going to implement the Keep the Country Tidy campaign. Uh, that's going to potentially help with the environment. Um, and then we're also going to do a reforestation with 100 million per year trees. That should uh, help to keep our environmental issues under control. So this is what I mean about balancing everything in the people's favor. Things like reforestation and all that are not greatly affecting anyone. In fact, they're employing people because we now we need people to go and plant those trees. It's also going to help people's health. It's going to increase their lifespan and increase lifespan and health means that they are more productive at life, which means that their businesses and all that are going to run better, which is going to uh, greatly affect the economy, etc., etc. So Royal Scandal, I'm going to criticize the monarch because, well, you know, you deserve to be criticized if you are um, doing the wrong thing. So we have a serious pollution problem. So I need to do a little bit more pollution related things. It's dropped the health, which is interesting. Doesn't really make much sense, does it? In the fact that... Mm. So naturally entertaining. So there you go. Our country's celebrated naturalists have done it again with a video documentary being a global smash hit. There we go. That's a good thing. All right, so what can I do right here? Oh yes, so generous grants for university. Uh, state schools are up at the absolute maximum where we want them to be. Public libraries are at the maximum, which is where we want them to be. Selective schooling, we will come back to. Art subsidies. We have an opera house in this country. Therefore, see, the first part of this episode has been basically introducing the things that this country already has. 
which is interesting. So, we still have seven political capital. Uh, I'm going to bump up the state water company to the absolute maximum. This is going to uh, help with poverty because it means that nobody is going to at any point ever uh, not have clean water. So down here as well, uh, no, that's not what I was, no, no, there's something down here that I'll need to, I just can't remember which one it is. There is something in public services that I need to increase. So what's the executive, yeah, so the term length is three years. There is no executive term limit though, which is not ideal, but not necessarily a bad situation with uh, elections every three years. A corporate exodus. Now you see, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever with such a strong GDP and such strong education. Hang on, what do you mean in the Green co I'm not the Green Collective. I clicked on the new moderates. Well, that's really annoying. Really annoying. Thanks for that game. Anyway, we'll keep uh, going along as if we are the new moderates, even though the game doesn't think that we are the new moderates, because... Pff, bloody stupid thing. Ah, there it is. Adult education subsidies. Up to the very maximum. And then we can look at... See, we have work safety laws in this country. And they are very high as well. You see, that's... Well, first things first, Australia is clearly not um, set up the way it's meant to be within this game. Um, hello, webcam. You want to refocus? Refocus? Hello? Right. I'm Bryce. I'm blurry as fuck. Stupid thing. Um, yeah. Let's raise the speed limits. Okay, so now... We get 35% of the vote at the next election. How do I change my name? So we're going to make the pledge to raise human development. We're going to make the pledge to raise the GDP. Uh, we're going to raise gender equality. And we're going to raise the secularity of education. Those can be our floor, uh, floor, our floor pledges. Come on, webcam, get your shit together. Okay, so this is our last turn before we go to the election. So we need to do something that is extremely beneficial. Robotics research grants. It's only, it's not very popular with voters. That's the only problem. I mean, yeah. Mm. Hmm. Technology colleges. Yes. Let's implement some technology colleges. Beautiful. Fantastic. 
Okay, so this is going to bring us around to the first election. Now, we might struggle with this. So, expand public rights of way. As we build more houses in our country, once open land that was used by walkers and hikers, private property, social, protest of these changes. Uh, going to take no action at this point. Just because I feel like it's too early in my term to take that sort of action. Alright, so, again, I'm really annoyed by the fact that we are referred to as the Green Collective when I am 100% sure that I said that we were going to be the new moderates. So, yeah, not impressed by that at all, game. But anyway, I guess... Uh, we may as well start the count. I'm in a coalition with the Patriotic Alliance. Okay, it's not the end of the world. That is not the end of the world. So what changes did we manage in the first... The food price significantly down, crime significantly down, poverty significantly down, stability up, lifespan up, the environment up, foreign relations up, violent crime down, foreign investment up, health is up, energy efficiency is up, productivity and technology are up, and democracy is up, education, international trade, human development. You see, that's all the things that uh, you want. It really is. Now, our foreign policy and law and order is going to hang around. Everybody else is getting fired. So, Minister for Welfare. Shaw, Jeremy Shaw. I feel like I'm the one who, I think I just fired you. But anyway, welcome back. Whoops. Economy. Um, the guy with 1.1. Tax. Hmm. Tax 0 0.5, tax at tax 0 0.9, tax 1.0. Kayla Scott, welcome to the team. Public services. 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 1.0, Claire Bell, higher. And transport. Transport 1.0 for Dominic Stevens. Yep. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. We're going to hire him. So that leaves us with our new cabinet. Right. So we're in a coalition with the Patriotic Alliance. We've got the wrong fucking name. <laughs> I need to figure out how to change that. Um, and I'll give that a go. But, um, ladies and gentlemen and legends of the highest regard, it has been a pleasure to have you along in our, uh, resurrection of Australia as the country, the great country it once was. Uh, yeah. Anyway, wherever you are in the world, make sure you look after yourselves. Uh, stay safe, stay well, and don't do anyone I wouldn't do. And I will see you next time.